that kind of reads hypocritical when you were criticizing Amber for obesifying a chihuahua when you're leaving your obese chihuahua to rot in your mom's backyard. Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite guilty pleasure influencer and my favorite guilty pleasure sub-influencer of said influencer. So if you're ready to go on a journey with me, bear with me. Yeah, I have had fellow clinicians and even doctors tell me that I'm doing a great job. I have had PhD offers. I'm in med school. I work full time. I have a degree. Any opinions that go directly against what these people think about themselves will completely be repressed, ignored, or they will be met with extreme defensiveness. I hear messages and comments seeing how disappointing it is that I'm promoting conspiracies to my following because I went to see Russell Brand's comedy show last night. How one dimensional can you be that you lose your mind because someone likes something that you may not like? Or that someone may enjoy the art of someone that you don't accept as an individual. To me, Anne Boleyn Reed's morality and outlook on life is incredibly skewed. I think when you can safely say Nico Cardo is a great person, Trisha Paytas is someone I look up to, your morality is slightly skewed because you choose to not see certain things. There's extreme defensiveness, sometimes even aggression, sometimes rage. That I'm literally sat here seeing comments like, I can't believe you're supporting a right wing conservative. What the fuck are you talking about? You need to fucking go outside and touch grass. She started off by telling everyone that she was in med school. Then she said she was getting a PhD. It turns out that she was in an online master's program and didn't do very well grade wise. She told everyone that she was a full time SEN teacher. Then she was going to be working in a lab. Then all of a sudden she's now a therapist. She gives really aggressive, not like other girls energy. Like she has made a comment at one point that quote, she doesn't like men and other women tend to not like her. I have never met someone who claims that women don't like them. That isn't. Today we're going to be talking about Amberlynn Reed and by extension, Young Dumb Honeybun. If you're familiar with the Amberverse or the Goralverse or that entire shit show, you know what I'm about to say. But if you're not, then get ready for a wild ride. Amberlynn Reed, if you know of her, you know of her as somebody who people laugh at on the internet. And everybody is filming reaction videos or compilation videos where they use her footage. And there are so many videos about her, made about her, and channels that pop up over the years that completely dedicate their accounts to her. Well, Young Dumb Honey Bun is one of those accounts. And I am actually able to say I'm pretty sure that I can blame her for my introduction to the Amberverse because I was free from our girl before I actually stumbled across one of Sarah's videos. I actually believe it wasn't a video on Amberlynn. I believe it was a video about some other influencer that was screaming about masks and I really liked it. I thought that Sarah was witty. I thought that she had a cattiness to her, but it was, it was charming because she was coming from a place of like knowledge and understanding. But I feel like I didn't understand what her content would become because she didn't either, you know? She started as a compilation channel, so she wasn't even using her footage of herself. She was just taking Amber's footage, and she was apparently a fan of Amber before, you know, Amber started doing her Amber things. Because if you don't know why people don't support Amber Lynn Reed, I could do a whole video on that, but I'm not, I, I that is just, I'm going to do a video on Young Dumb Honey Bun because somehow that's more interesting to me. Because this current season of Amberverse, no, no, it's bad. Young Dumb Honey Bun is the girl boss of the century. That's what me and my boyfriend like to call her because she has such an aggressive gaslight gatekeep girl boss energy. And she is famous for using her med school degrees to diagnose Amber online with like NPD and other things. And the first thing that anybody learns in psych and in really any medical practice for that matter is that you can't diagnose someone over the internet. And a lot of people have criticized Young Dumb Honey Bun over the years for saying these things, but she has an inability to admit fault. She can't be like, all right, you, you guys are right. She's just showing traits. She's just She's just showing signs. We're just having messy fun. No, she stands by her diagnosis. She works. She worked hard for her degrees. She she was busting her ass working full time retail while nobody believed in her. And so all of this, she has fans, and I used to be one of them. But eventually, I and many others realized that she had one of the most negative, toxic girl boss attitudes. And if you don't believe me, I am going to show you one of my favorite Young Dumb Honey Bun rants. 
This is a rant that she did at the expense of a mentally ill 600 pound woman who eats herself to death on camera because she is oh so much better than her. Baby girl, I'm in med school. I work full time. I have a degree. I have a whole ass beautiful man by my side. My skin is clear. My makeup is flawless. I am living my best life. Flawless. I am living my best life. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show stopping. Oh, hold on, is, is my hair not supposed to be growing? I smell like coconut oil. I will go beyond the superficial. I am an educated woman. I am an educated immigrant woman who has a career. Regardless of the coinage that I make on YouTube of your name, I have a successful life. I literally can't believe she sits there and like says stuff like this. I can't like, do you not hear yourself talk? Do you not feel stupid? Because I would feel really weird and like not very, like I would just be like, mm, like hearing yourself talk. Do you not hear yourself talk? Here's the thing. This video of hers has been deleted, so I'm not going to hold this as a representative of all of her content. But that rant gives you an idea, because this isn't the first time she's ranted at Amberlynn Reed. And, like, this was because Amberlynn called her a dumb bitch online. And, like, Young Dumb Honeybun's full-time job is calling Amber a dumb bitch. Basically, she doesn't call her a dumb bitch. She diagnoses her as a dumb bitch. I'm not even kidding. Like, she has literally said that Amber has low IQ, um, that obesity is the cause of it, and that someone, quote, with a mind like hers shouldn't be on social media. So it's not like she's not guilty of being toxic to this girl. She was upset that this girl wanted to bite back, because the truth is, is that Amber can't handle how much hate she gets. She gets such an inordinate amount of hate that I, I really don't want to add to it. Do you know what I mean? Because everybody knows Okay, here, let me give you a summary of every single one of Sarah's videos lately. She talks about how Amberlynn Reed is eating herself to death on a platform. She, how Amberlynn Reed is exploiting her platform. She is exploiting her disorder for views and monetizing her addiction is not okay and that she needs to get therapy. A lot of people agree with these points. A lot of people have been saying these points to Amber for years. She's never gonna listen. But the point is, is that, that that was part of the charm of Young Dumb Honey Bun is she hammered that point home. The problem is, is that she has been making videos since 2020. I, I don't know how long she's been making videos actually. Um, that's how long I've been watching her. And they've been the same the whole time. The whole time. Every video is the same. She's ranting about Amberlynn. She, he, Amberlynn's abusing her, it, Amberlynn's monetizing her addiction, right? But why is it okay that she monetizes Amberlynn's addiction? That's what I want to know because as a young YouTuber, I have been on YouTube longer than Young Dumb Honey Bun has and I went in and out. I quit multiple times because it's hard out here for a bitch. But this girl has 80,000 subscribers that she did build the community off of hating on Amberlynn. And you know how I know, and she knows it. She has to own up to it because her other content does not get the same amount of views, which means that she built her platform off of toxicity, right? No matter how righteous it is to go after somebody who deserves it, that is what her platform is built off of. So when she's spewing this kind of stuff back, this rant back at Amberlynn, she doesn't realize how pointless it is and inane it is. And I asked myself, I actually believe this was when I, I started to analyze myself. I couldn't deal with her content at some point because it was starting to feel really bad about myself every time I watched her. Every time I watched her, she was talking about how she's in med school. She was talking about how she has all these degrees and she's working really hard and how it, what if anybody's not working hard, there's a will, there's a way. You know, Becky had just been out of a relationship with Amber and it was clearly an abusive relationship and they admitted to that and Becky had clearly been financially abused and was struggling to get back on her feet. And, you know, Sarah wasn't showing any empathy for her and one of her fans asked her about that and Sarah was like, look, where, where there's a will, there's a way. It's very much like bootstraps it up, Becky. And now, Young Dumb Honey Bun, I am actually a little worried might be going down her like conservative arc in like weird cult. This could be a sign to like seeing everything as a sign. So he was like, you need to do everything in moderation, otherwise you're gonna go nuts. Um, and then you know he was just saying a lot of other things. He was like talking about cults and how they start and how like the charismatic leaders and things like that. Um, get people hooked and whatever else. But it was just really, really cool. Like you come out feeling refreshed. You come out feeling like you want to talk about. It. She she's in a weird sphere of British politics. That's all I'm gonna say. And I'm not gonna speculate anything beyond that because I've never met her. And like I said, I used to like her becoming the toxicity that she wanted to deplatform. You know, she's always complaining about how Amber's monetizing her addiction. But you know what? You're monetizing Amber's addiction, and that's worse. 
And you can say, well, all reaction channels do this. This is fine. No, I actually don't think so. I think that her videos are some of the laziest videos I have ever seen. No offense, Sarah. Your videos used to be a lot better. Even the ones where you just looked, you just like Google searched onto Quora, just like psych facts, and you were just like, I'm diagnosing Amber with Google. Those were better than what you're making now because she has gotten complacent. She's making a lot of content now and every video is the same. She makes videos on Foodie Beauty too, and those are actually a lot better than her videos on Amber. I'm going to I'm gonna tell her right now. Because the truth is, there's nothing to cover on Amber. It's not entirely her fault, but she's really hypocritical, and that's the problem. She can't see it. Every time she has been, every time she has said something about Amber, you can like find an example of what she, of her saying, of her doing that exact thing. And can you remember she was like, I'm a mental health activist and like, I'm a, you know, like I stand with people and I want to be an inspiration for all of those in my shoes, blah, 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 blah. And like, I, I want to be an inspiration. I want to help, blah, blah. but I'm actively going to put out something that can work against you. Even though I know that's how I feel. Like if you as a binge, like, like a food addict knew that this type of content triggers you, why on earth would you then put it out? If you know you have the same kinds of people in your audience. That's how you know she doesn't care. She doesn't care. Team up and take a Young Dumb Honey Buns channel down because she's going into pro Anna content around someone said, like, just to clarify, that's not true. Like, I'm very open about calorie, like, maintaining calories and speaking to professionals and things like that, which again, I know that you all know. Um, and Amberlynn was like, um, if someone's triggered and feels like, you know, my posts were kind of hitting hard, then, like, you have to respect that. And I agree. I want to say I agree. However, just because you are personally triggered does not mean someone is pro Anna, pro bulimia, pro whatever. You cannot pull terms out of your asshole and then accuse people of doing that based on your own feelings. You can't do that. She consistently encourages eating disorders. Sarah fasting for 12 to 18 hours. She didn't want me to restrict, which is amazing because I was scared that she was going to tell me to cut my calories back. And she was like, no, I eat anywhere from 2,000 to 2,200 calories a day easily just from like my my beans and starches and things like that and i can easily hit 2000 calories um and so she was like that's absolutely fine it's like you need your portions and i think you have enough calories in your diet she was like i don't think you need to restrict especially with you know your training so far and like your results and things like that like you can stay under 2200 or um like around there just bear in mind that the more you eat obviously the more you're gonna have to burn off at the gym i said perfect sarah eating 300 to 500 cows less than suggested and working out on top of that But if I'm someone who people find inspiring and they want to, you know, take my advice, then that's always, always a step in the right direction. You're taking that away from people. And I think that's a really fucking shitty thing to do, to be honest. Believe that. I literally cannot believe she sits there and, like, says stuff like this. I can't, like, do you not hear yourself talk? Do you not feel stupid? Because I would feel really weird and, like, not very, like, I would just be like, mm, like, hearing yourself talk. Do you not hear yourself talk? We're in this particularly strange art where her channel has been in decline for a while. She blew up, like, last, last year where she was, like, psychologist diagnosis Amberlynn Reed. And I haven't gotten into this, but... This girl was not in med school. This girl was claiming she had all these degrees. She was only 23 at the time. I was really getting down on myself because I was failing my undergrad program while this girl was 23 and she was in med school and doing a master's and working full time. And I was like, what? And the way she was talking about it, it almost felt like a degree of superiority at some point. And I almost couldn't take it anymore. So she's branched out to gaming and she's branched out to like fitness influencering on Instagram. But the problem is, Sarah, is that she has become exactly what she hates in Amberlynn because she has been posting incredibly triggering content to her fans, uh, constant body checking, calorie counting, fitness bun. She's entered her fitness bun era where she, I'm not kidding, like two months ago she decided she's a gym rat now. All she does is post all the time about how she's going to the gym, these pictures of herself and gym selfies and all her games she's gotten and some of these games that she's claiming to have gotten are like a week after the gym right how are we supposed to believe this but it's it's it i almost feel like it's done deliberately to piss people off because she realized that's what got amber attention the problem is is that she is turning into amber then because her fans are contacting her and being like listen you know how you have made a platform up of laughing at fat women well now you're making me someone who found you because you're part of an eating disorder community of the internet. You're triggering my eating disorder. And she's like, no, mm -mm, uh, uh, my way or the highway. I'm a girl boss because she's a girl boss and she can't be told what to do. I get caught up on why Sarah isn't the greatest. Well, for starters, she's a pathological liar. 
She started off by telling everyone that she was in med school. Then she said she was getting a PhD. It turns out that she was in an online master's program and didn't do very well grade-wise. She told everyone that she was a full-time SEN teacher. Then she was going to be working in a lab. Then all of a sudden she's now a therapist. She has not been qualified for any of these jobs at any point. She continues to lie constantly about her qualifications and experience, and her stories just don't add up. She's telling everyone now that she's a full-time behavioral therapist who also does school-based assessments. It's clear that she's unemployed because she's online literally all the time. When she isn't fighting with people in the comment section, she's posting fake gym selfies and that, that she photoshops to look like she's in better shape than she is. Her constant lying is problematic in itself, but the real issue is that she's claiming an authority about psychological and clinical issues and speaking on behalf of the field. She used is the guise of her qualifications to bully Am Chantal and Amberlin. She acts as an incredibly unethical and immoral manner by diagnosing them on her channel, even though she's A, not qualified to make a diagnosis, and B, should know that true clinicians can only diagnose clients that they serve. Even famous YouTube psychologists remind their viewers that they cannot offer a diagnosis. She has also given educational presentations about psychology without citing a contemporary article or peer-reviewed study. She doesn't even use the DSM. She just lifts information from Quora and random online articles and acts like she's supporting wild claims with verified sources. She uses fake psychobabble words to explain psychological aspects of Chantal and Amber, even though they aren't real clin clinical terms. She also uses very pejorative language that has no business coming out of a therapist's mouth. She's severely misrepresenting the field, and that can have detrimental effect on her viewers. If they think all therapists call people names and fling out wild accusations, they might reconsider going. Yeah, all of this. Not to mention, some of the claims that she has made are incredibly harmful, and people have tried to correct her on it, and she doubles down. She made the claim that oh, that not being able to lose weight is a sign of low intelligence, and she cited this BS study that is a correlative study, not a causational study, and in most cases, people find that like any example of that could be maybe as a result of, you know, obesity leading to lower brain activity or brain fog, but not necessarily dumb people being led to eat more you know what i mean but she took this information used it very weirdly and misrepresented it against amber saying it was a sign of it was a sign of being low intelligence and that high bmi is a sign of low iq and she cited this bs article she acted like it was a source even though it was something she probably just found on google and you know what the weirdest part is now that we're in the fitness bun era we are finding out how similar she is to amberlin because she is lying about her weight She's been lying about her height for a while. She's lied about her weight to us multiple times, and now we found out she has a perfectly, perfectly good body. body. I am not going to shame her. But by the BMI standard, she has a low IQ by her own logic. And that is why I think she's gone so neurologically like twisted with her Instagram lately because it's all fitness. It's all weirdly Photoshopped pictures. Not to mention she is a major situation of like filler too much going on. Like she's got like, she got that influencer money fast by laughing at Amberlynn on the internet. And she really thinks she's like the next Trisha Paytas. But the problem is, is that she's starting to look like Trisha Paytas and that's not good. Sorry, but it's not. And she also, like, she's been caught saying such weird things. She once said that she would never get arm tattoos because she wants them in places that are easy to cover. This bitch then gets a neck tattoo and a chin tattoo. And she has full tattoos now here with fully untattooed un arms. And she's claiming to be a behavioral therapist that has all of these crop tops and tattoos that she wears to work. And... She has been caught lying about things in the past, and now people are questioning if whether or not she's telling the truth about her job. Because, you know, she's been on the internet now for two years laughing at mentally ill people and calling them stupid. She has. And I don't care what behavioral field you're in. I don't care what med school you went to, Sarah. I don't think that that's exactly smiled upon. But you know what she has to say about it? She says that the people she works with love her YouTube channel. Which, you know what tells me? Tells me she, that they have no idea about it. 
And at one point, she even let it slip that nobody in her life asks her about her channel. So I don't, I don't believe it, Sarah. I was very much in your shoes before yesterday until I commented explaining that it didn't make sense for her to demand that Amberlynn and any other public figure publicly acknowledge when they, when someone they've been linked to through collabs, etc., does something people aren't happy with and then turn around and shut down the conversation about who she supports and how she feels about their views, etc. Five minutes in, her Amberlynn come get your bestie video, she talks about it if you're interested. I even said in the comment that I was a supporter of hers in Russell Brands and I wasn't sure how I felt about all of these things being said about him or how best to handle it, and she blocked me. And I suppose a few other people. Then went on a whole meltdown on Instagram accusing everyone who criticized her of 100% being American. It sort of hit me how rude she is to her fan base outside of YouTube, exactly like Amber. How much of a rules for thee, not for me, is she? And then all of a sudden, the other inconsistencies I saw. All you have to do is question her or give her gen genuine criticism once and you'll be blocked and fall down the rabbit hole that is Sarah's BS. In one of her recent Instagram meltdowns, she blatantly states that if you don't have the same education, qualifications, job aspirations, then you have nothing and you are below her. She thinks less of you. She absolutely refuses to listen to anyone else unless they are on her level. She's so incredibly mean and rude to her audience unless they're kissing her ass. And this is key because I actually, I, I felt this. I'm an empath, okay? Shane Dawson found dead. I really did feel judged at one point because I was I was living a sedentary life amidst quarantine and I wasn't feeling good. I was so depressed and I was not living my best life. Like she is, her hair is growing. She smells like coconut oil, but I don't, or at least I didn't. And now I'm calling her out because I, I don't see her change. She's just continuing to girl boss harder and harder and it's becoming sad. One of my favorite things about Sarah, besides the fact that she thinks the arm tattoos are too conspicuous despite her neck beard. Foot and wrist tattoos hurt so much. I never had my wrist tattooed. I'm sort of working from it like in the middle outwards. Um, so I'm really scared to like start getting my arms and stuff done because that's like visible and like can't hide that. Like so if it's bad, it's bad. So I'm just- Normalize telling people that their tattoos fucking suck. And then when she got a kind of basic neck tattoo of a snake, that didn't look particularly great. And her followers were like, this doesn't look amazing. She was so upset about it. You're walking in on someone and they just sit there and they're just like, <laughs> and then they're like editing it. Like, I just find it so weird. I just find it so cringy, no matter who it is. Like there, like she's acting all like, and then she's just burst out laughing. Like, why are you laughing at me? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna quietly so you can like get it, you know, it's like, that one, right? That okay? That uh okay? So it's just in your living room, and like no one's there, or like your girlfriend's probably just there on her phone, or like you're watching like RuPaul's Drag Race. She literally said two videos ago that if you publicly link yourself to people, you should expect them to question it. You should expect people to question it and sometimes come out about them. And then she blocked me. And now her fans are like, hey, I'm disappointed. They're not even like attacking her. And she's just like, well, if you don't like to watch. And that's exactly what Amber does. And Amber has always said, well, then why are you here? And now she wonders why she's struggling with views. Well, honestly, I think that's why Sarah's struggling with views now. Sarah used to get over 100,000 views on her videos, sometimes 200,000. And I think it was because her channel hit a peak relevance around the time that Amber was breaking up with Becky, but her views started to dwindle because that was when her nastiness really started to show. And I'm sorry, Sarah, but if you're listening, do it would do you some good to show a soft side once in a while. I'm not kidding. That's another thing. She basically, she'll just block you. You can even just say like, she'll be live streaming Stardew Valley and she'll be getting stuck or planting something wrong. And if you try to correct her, she'll just block you. And it's idiotic because it's like, girl, you built your community out of criticism. So why can't you take it? I used to really like her content, but more and more I've seen major inconsistencies. I literally went back to the video I was thinking of to see if I imagined her saying it, but lo and behold, it's right there. I said my comment, I think you can support who you like, but you can't take offense when people hold you to your own standard. I think this is Sarah being mature and confident. She tells everyone who disagrees with her to leave, even if they have a point. While you shouldn't watch things you don't like, she really has to take this stuff into consideration and not just construct an echo chamber for herself of trying to portray it as confidence. Sarah, you can't just comprehend that people could possibly disagree with you and be right about it. Unfollow me is not the solution to everything. I find so fascinating about it is if you, if you're expecting to hold Amberlynn 
accountable, right? For her years, you're saying she should be deplatformed for all of these things. Sarah does not realize how ironic it is because the only thing that Sarah has promoted over the course of Amber's channel and over the course of her channel is making like diagnosing people online with your psych courses because what did come out about her by the way she was claiming to be in med school but she had an undergraduate degree in psychology and she had a master's degree in neuropsychiatry that is not what she presented and i am not dissing her qualifications but she's not qualified to say the things she's saying she's not qualified for the positions she's claiming to have experience in the field with and it is weird because she's constantly changing her story and her fans can't, can't keep up. Like she, her bio used to say behavioral therapist. And once somebody called it out on her little snark sub, cause there's 2000 of us now talking about her inconsistencies cause it doesn't add up. All of a sudden she changed it from behavioral therapist to therapist. Cause I think she realized that she, she doxed herself by printing her degree for that's the thing. I wouldn't care. I actually wouldn't care. I don't think most people are trying to dox my degree or anything like that because I'm not claiming to be the girl boss of the century. The problem is, is that Sarah really does think she's the next coming of Albert Einstein. But like, it it really, you can tell it's insecurity. And like, she has these really weird, cringy portraits of white men of psychology in her house. And you could say whatever you want. She's passionate about psychology. But it just gives me the creeps because she always says these weird things about women and her channel is off of hating women. Like, I actually don't know if I've seen her do a video on a guy. And if she if she has, that's my bias. But she tends to hate on women and she says a lot of weird things about women. She literally says that women don't like her. And that's the that is the verbiage of someone who treats women like they're like different, you know? I don't know. She's very not like other girls. Something that I also really do not like about Sarah is that she very, very overgeneralizes issues of race and nationality, especially. Like she she has often said that Americans are more racist than Europeans. That, that racism isn't as much of a problem here, that she's never seen it, and America seems to really have a problem. And I think that that is an ignorant statement to make. Because first of all, people do not behave uniformly differently based off of just the country they live. I mean, there are socioeconomic factors and everything, but it's also just incredibly ignorant of the fact that there is racism that still goes on in Europe. And it's very like, it's boastful and, and like, ha ha, you silly Americans and your, and your slavery. And it's like, people forget that the British empire is not exactly like squeaky clean. And She's always boasting about how she's she's an educated immigrant woman and she's got two degrees and baby she's in med school but like she's so desperate to prove it and and flaunt it and girl boss it that it just it it comes across as bragging and I think that that's why so many people like myself are turned off by it. after she came out as pro right wing conspiracy theorist she was getting a bunch of overflowing support from conservatives and she was bragging about it for some reason proud of you for this I'm a conservative American and I know you and I don't agree on some things but I love hearing your take on stuff and all caps learning the other side black and white type people are the reason we're in this mess we're in keep being real and the real ones will love you for it. This is such a dishonest way of portraying it because that is not what Sarah's doing. She's not hearing out the other side. People are like, why are you talking to Russell Brand? And she's like, unfollow me. <laughs> That's, and, and it's it's being deliberately obtuse about it and, and like smug. There's the smugness, you know? She's just, she's so smug. She's a hypocrite. She is mad that Amber is monetizing her eating disorder, but when she did her fitness bun era, big shocker, we found out that not only was she lying to us about her height and weight, therefore her BMI, she, well, I actually think she was just lying about her height. We also found that she wasn't following her doctor's orders and she wasn't following the prescribed plan for her by her doctor, which is exactly what she was lecturing Amber about constantly for being like, how dare you assume you know better than your doctor? And when called out about it by her fans, do you think that Sarah was like, okay, you're right. I'm going to take this L. I'm going to reevaluate. No. Blocked. Delete. Can't deal with that. Haters. And it's like, that's exactly what Amber Lynn would do. And it's fascinating. The more I watch her, it's like, oh my God, she's becoming Amber Lynn. And I think it's terrifying. 
Some of these comments are too long to read, but these people don't know how to respectfully disagree anymore, and it's honestly terrifying. Ugh. Don't let people scare you off of the things you're passionate about. If you're standing up for a good cause, inspiring people, and doing good, keep at it. Stick to your morals and beliefs. Accept others and hear both sides before making a judgment. Those around you who have a conflicting view are not your enemy. If they are simply conflicted or haven't got their mind made up, it's not your job to assign that based on your moral compass. You choose who you want to cut out and always value your mental health first. This is so, so gaslight, girl boss. It's like, what good cause is she standing up for when she is, when she's blocking people for saying, oh, I'm disappointed that we disagree on this. <laughs> what What's the good cause that, that you had to go to this Russell Brand r yummy mummy retreat and the fact that not everybody licked you for it made you sad? Like, is that the, is that it? And I'm sorry, but this preachy, if you have a good message, then the real ones will love you. And it's like, Sarah, your message has been the same since the beginning of your channel. And if it's about holding Amberlynn accountable, I don't really think it is anymore. Because it, it kind of seems about you making money off of Amberlynn while you keep her relevant. And that is because she's making more Amberlynn content than ever. It is lower effort than ever, because just like our girl, it's lower effort than ever. So who knows, girls, maybe, do you think that, that Sarah and Emberlyn may be there on the same cycle? Sarah has stated that she is qualified to offer diagnosis of both Amber and Chantal. It is unethical to diagnose someone you only know on the internet. Also, Sarah does not meet any professional qualifications to diagnose anyone. You typically need to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist to have an authority to offer a diagnosis. Even with the correct qualifications, you can't diagnose someone through the internet when they can pick and choose the parts of themselves they show. Here's another perfect example of Sarah slowly turning into Amberlynn. She has always been incredibly hard on Amberlynn for her animal abuse. And let me be clear, Amber is has a pretty bad history with animals on YouTube. She has definitely neglected her animals on camera. However, the claims of abuse that Sarah has made uh, have been largely exaggerated and milked for views right well that people have been now accusing sarah of similar similar things with animals that she accuses amber of like sarah is incredibly upset that amber has let twinkie get overweight but sarah's old dog was another chihuahua that happened to also be overweight and you might ask what do you mean old dog what happened to it oh she she gave it to her mom and you can say oh well maybe the mom wanted it it's like okay that's possible now a lot of her haters see it as, oh, well, she just got rid of the dog so she could get a brand new shiny dog. Oh, she replaced it with a new dog, you said? Yes. And she got an expensive breed. And it's like, it's not the kind of dog that wants to be in an expensive apartment in the city where it can't go outside all the time. And it's, it kind of seems like she got it for like the Instagram bad bitch aesthetic, but that kind of reads, that kind of reads hypocritical when you were criticizing Amber for obesifying a chihuahua when you're leaving your obese chihuahua to rot in your mom's backyard. She's this supposed animal activist, but it kind of seems like she's just hating on Amber and picking whatever she can to hate on her for. And then when people point out that she does something similar to Amber, then she's just like, well, unfollow me. <laughs> and I just think it's infuriating because she, I think she thinks she's better than the people she's criticizing. That's the only, that's the only thing that I can, like she, when her viewers ask her, why is your supposed big dog puppy not getting walked and not going out a lot? And she's like, oh, well, he's just a sleepy boy. He likes to sleep all day, but also she is walking him all he needs. And like, something's not adding up. That's all I'm saying. She is not this animal rights advocate that she claims to be. She has used most of her time on YouTube to call people narcissistic, pathological liars who will do anything for views. But she has proven that not only is she narcissistic enough to Photoshop her photos and lie about her weight loss journey in, within like weeks just so she can get Instagram clout, but she is petty enough to double down on it and block people to try to call them out about it, which I'm sorry, but when there's smoke, there's fire. A lot of people seem to have problems with her.
allowed to diagnose, I took a class on psychology in college, so she's allowed to diagnose Amber, I'm going to diagnose her, she can diagnose me. That's the thing, we've entered a new phase of the internet where she has opened the floodgates and now there's a bunch of young kids who took a psych class at their community college and now they're diagnosing people on the internet because Shane Dawson also called Jake Paul a sociopath. <sighs> what a world. There have been many times where she has intentionally misrepresented things, and I would say it's it's safe to call her a pathological liar. For one, she lied about going to med school. She I just think it's important that we call out these contradictions, because if she's allowed to do it to Amber, who is a lol cow, she, she does idiotic things on the internet for views. At this point, I feel like Sarah is doing idiotic things for views, because if you see some of these photos she photoshops, it's... It's so obvious, and she has a really nice body, so I have no idea what she's doing making herself try to look like Gumby with, like, a full diaper. So the first one is extremely high self-importance. Uh, the defining characteristic of a narcissist is extremely high idea of themselves and how important they are. More than just sort of arrogance and their vanity, this goes beyond that. These people have a, such an unrealistic sense of superiority to everyone around them. They believe that they are unique, they are special, um, and they can only be understood by other special people. They are too good for anything ordinary, anything normal, and not only that, they will only associate themselves with someone who they see as an equal. The only person I will ever listen to is the person who I look up to. The only person. That's the only person. If you're a published clinician with X amount of experience, with a doctorate, with whatever, which is my next step. Reminded me so much of my videos because in like in so many videos lately, I was like, just because you're a doctor doesn't mean fucking anything. Like, it doesn't mean that you know anything. You can get a doctorate in anything. So they really believe that they are better than everyone else. They're above everyone else. And they think that they deserve recognition of that, even though they haven't done anything to sort of prove it or to earn it. They will often exaggerate the things that they have done in life or just outright lie um, about their achievements and their talents. When they talk about, you know, relationships or work, all you'll hear about is how good they are, how great they are. I have had fellow clinicians and even doctors tell me that I'm doing a great job. I have had PhD offers. I'm in med school. I work full time. I have a degree. Any opinions that go directly against what these people think about themselves will completely be repressed, ignored, or they will be met with extreme defensiveness. I'm getting messages and comments saying how disappointing it is that I'm promoting conspiracies to my following because I went to see Russell Brand's comedy show last night. How one-dimensional can you be that you lose your mind because someone likes something that you may not like or that someone may enjoy the art of someone that you don't accept as an individual? To me, Anne Boleyn reads morality and outlook on life is incredibly skewed. I think when you can safely say Nico Cardo is a great person, Trisha Paytas is someone I look up to, your morality is slightly skewed because you choose to not see certain things. This extreme defensiveness, sometimes even aggression, sometimes rage. The fact that I'm literally sat here seeing comments like, I can't believe you're supporting a right wing conservative. What the fuck are you talking about? You need to fucking go outside and touch grass. If you're gonna make your money off of talking shit off of someone, you better be able to take it right. If you are going to make your full-time job making pretty harsh claims about people on the internet, you better at least hold yourself to a similar standard, you know? She said that it's not okay for Amberlynn to talk about her nipples being grabbed by her girlfriend, but we had to hear all about her nipple piercings, you know? It, she said it's, a, it's not okay that Amber completely relies on YouTube as a full-time job, that she needs to pound that pavement, get other jobs, but it's very clear to me, at least, as somebody who's doing YouTube full-time, it is not that easy for me, at least, because I put a lot of effort into it, but she's streaming twice a week, she's posting constantly, trying to keep up with these girls, and she's supposedly a therapist, so all I'm saying is, it, th there's no shame in YouTube being a full-time job, Sarah, but just it, just admit it. She's on social media more than ever. I don't know anybody with a full-time job, much less two, because having, hi, she will and the rest of us will laugh when Amberlynn says she knows better than a nutritionist. But Sarah, who has no qualifications in behavioral science of dogs, she will actually clap back at a professional who is telling her that, that she is raising her dog improperly by locking him in a little apartment. A cane corso working dog does not want to be in a city. And it's not like, it's not the end of the world to have that pointed out. But she can't handle any amount of criticism because any amount of criticism is too much. And that's my problem with her. You know, she makes some nuanced points as she used to, I thought, come at it in good faith. But the problem is that if you cannot take it, 
You should not dish it. That is how I feel. I am fully expecting people to come at me saying that I'm being mean, saying that I hate women. Sarah made an entire video laughing about how Amberlynn made an OnlyFans and then didn't deliver on it. But you know what Sarah did? She made an OnlyFans and then she didn't deliver on it. It's like it, 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 she speaks these things into existence. She is the embodiment of toxic positivity and just like, just girl boss, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Oh, you're overwhelmed because you're working nine to five and you're burning the candle at both ends going to night school. Well, just get up earlier. Just get up early and do some work. That's what she says. Her self-care is getting up early and doing work. And then she has the audacity, she has the whole audacity to post her update yesterday. It was, hi, I'm so sorry about this. I've been really overwhelmed with balancing work and school and YouTube and personal life, but I, but I promise I'm doing it. And it's like, and, and then she's posting her schedule, her stupid schedule for her stupid gaming streams. I'm sorry, it's stupid. She's not a gamer. She hates these games. She clearly hates them. Every time you join the stream, it's like watching paint dry because it's like, it's agonizing trying to see her navigate a game that she doesn't understand. And she's going to do it twice a week. And she's supposedly fully employed, but she can't manage to burn the candle at both ends. Hmm. I made a post. I was like, you know, if you are really struggling that much, Sarah, you could try streaming once a week. I couldn't even fit streaming in once a week because I am busy making other content. And I think she should be too, by the way. Not a lot of people criticize her for this, but I think she is wasting a platform of 80,000 subs by making the same Amberlynn video every day. Like, I really hope that she sees my video on her and it thinks, hmm, maybe I should do different content. She should expose me. I would love the attention. I mean, I'm actually doing her a favor, I think, because at least somebody will be talking about her in a way that's not Amberlynn, right? I, I, and you know what? I'm sure other people have done these videos about her and more people will because she's getting nastier by the day. And I gotta say, it really rubbed me the wrong way when she knows, she, she clearly has struggled with an ED at some point in her life. Eating disorders, they, there's a community of eating disorders online. It is a cycle where people with eating disorders post about their eating disorders and talk about it with other people who have eating disorders and they reinforce it in each other. And I really, I really hate the way that she is playing into it by making fun of fat women and then having a perfectly normal body type that she completely filters, gets a bunch of fillers, filters that, photoshops the waist in, makes the butt look bigger, and then says, oh, it's all these gains I've been doing while girl bossing, working a full-time job, and doing YouTube, nine to five. But I'm really overwhelmed, but I'm also really happy. It's like, make it make sense. You know, you know the people who watch Amberlynn very likely struggle with eating disorders too. And you have the whole audacity to tell them to just leave if they're triggered by like, what you've been making. If I was making content that was causing my followers to relapse, I would be like, hmm, what am I doing? Should I stop? Maybe maybe you don't have to, but you could you could just think about it, you know? But she doesn't take that moment. Like, it's interesting. There's this moment, like, I, I had a moment of clarity when I saw the way she clapped back at people about Russell Brand. And it's like, oh, so she, She's really going to act like she's mediating and playing both sides. I've seen some weird blends of social media accounts, you know, like the last person I talked about, Trisha, was trying to blend OnlyFans and TikTok. But Sarah is trying to blend her Instagram and YouTube, where on YouTube, it's all about being like, let's make fun of fat people. It is. Like, she can say, it's like, no, it's the psychological aspects. But she really hasn't, hasn't said anything that she hasn't said, and most of what she talks about is the eating and the food and the disgust and she reacts with disgust to like video clips of Amber eating and that's what she makes money off of you know and I'll, I'll show some clips just clip the clips of her and it's not high effort it's not she, and she's trying to mix this I hate these fat on these fat lol cows I'm a tattooed bad bitch on Instagram who is such a fit, fitness baddie that she she can post her gains in a day and if you try to marry those two together, they're bound to not work. And that is why she's bleeding followers, she's bleeding engagement, and she is trying new things, but she's unable to accept that she is the problem. So if, for whatever reason, she watches this video, she should know that this is being made as a reminder that you can change. You can listen and grow. It's okay to not always be right. You know, I actually used to genuinely enjoy her content. Interestingly, it was before the neckbeard. And I know that's a mean thing to say about it, 
but it is all I can see ever since somebody pointed it out. <laughs> because I would never get a chin tattoo, and that is because it would it would add to my dysphoria, you know? It's the same reason I would never get a throat tattoo, because it would highlight my Adam's apple. You know, but she has the she has the privilege of not having that problem. But she clearly has other forms of dysphoria because she's getting fillers. She's had a Brazilian butt lift. She's she's getting all these surgeries. And she's trying to Photoshop herself into a Kardashian. And she's making fun of women with eating disorders on the internet. And she's claiming to be in med school as a therapist. And all while doing it, she's making a lot of money. A lot of people have attributed the decline of her channel to the fact that Amber's channel is dying. And for the fact that that is true, but I'm going to say for benefit of the doubt that she's actually declining at a rate faster than other reaction channels that I see, like Zachary Michael, Alex is Shook, and some people have said that there's sexism involved, but I, I don't think a community so dedicated to hating on women can really start decrying sexism now of all times. Like, don't get me wrong, there is a valid truth that there are more male reaction channels that are received better, but I, I think that more goes to show that there are just less women that are, like, willing to make fun of lol cows online for money. You know, Sarah happens to be one of them. And she, her, her first scandal was really her first, I guess, introduction into lol cowdom because she was essentially crossing a line. A fan had done a, a drawing, basically, of Amber. It wasn't exactly Amber, but it was drawn in Amber's likeness. And they were like, oh my God, this is so funny. It was during Am Amber's famous rant where she called everyone a despectful piece of shit and said she was so much better than everyone. And it was so funny to laugh at Amber, but Sarah goes around and makes merch off of it with Amber's face on it. I, and yeah, it's not a picture of Amber, but it looks, it really does look like her. And she got called out. People were really, really not happy. And you know what Sarah said? Do you think that she, was at all open to the criticism? Do you think she was, because you know, she's always talking about both sides. Crazy idea, listening to people who don't agree with you. She so it's such a weird feeling. And once again, I want to reiterate, 100% of the time this has happened, it was American viewership of mine. And I don't know what they teach you there. I don't know, like, I don't know what it is that you feel the need to paint people either as right or wrong. <laughs> The thing you time and time again I've talked about this. Not only that, she wasn't just acting like it wasn't happening. Then there were comments being left that she was genuinely like fighting back at. Like, oh well, she doesn't care about herself, so why should I care about her? Well, she's monetizing her addiction, so why can't I? And it's like, why should you be able to just because she does? And so she posts this really, really reluctant, like, hey guys, okay, fine, let's address this. Some people are mad, so. And, and it was it was just to me it left a sour taste in my mouth i actually think this was when i unsubscribed because for me this was a step too far like her her laughing at amber's snapchat ramp where she called everyone a disrespectful piece of shit that was funny but then she tried to profit off of it and it was really bad timing for her because this was right when when amber was diagnosed with cancer i think that happened after so she this these two things hit young dumb honey by this channel initially and it at least hurt her image and once we sidled into the becky breakup era i actually think that was the peak of her channel because so many oh my god i just took my i, I just <laughs> wiped some eyes out so many channels got into Amberlynn reacting during the Becky breakup and they were specifically able to pick apart Amberlynn in all these embarrassing live streams where she's just really, really mean to Becky. And so there was material. There was material for Sarah to work with and this was when she was getting 100,000, 200,000 views. But she was also starting to just say really nasty things about Amber. Like before, she would be like, you need to work on your relationship with food and go to a therapist. Now it's, you need to stop eating and doing there, there was an energy shift. It became like almost as if she thought she was better. And, and she does, she does do this. She does act like she's better than people. And she, and I'm just going to say she, she's always talking about how it's just like, oh, so you're canceling me for being associated with someone right wing. So we can't both sides it. Well, I'm just mediating both sides. And it's like, are you? And then she goes on to say, 
I love him. He's the best man I've ever met. I would sing. I would tap dance for him. I would donate both of my kidneys for him. I would surrogate for his... Like, I would... She literally rave reviews this. I don't know if maybe because Russell Brand was married to Katy Perry, you have a certain view of him and you haven't kept up with his work. I don't know. Maybe you think that, like, every single person who doesn't agree with, like, big governments and stuff is, like, a cultist or a, a whatever conspiracy head. And maybe, I don't know. Um, I'm not into that. Like, I just listen to his podcasts now and then, you know. Like, I really like his comedy style. His show Messiah was really, really good. I really recommend it. And he's just a good bloke. And it's just so weird to me that you can be so angry towards someone simply going to a comedy show. So just, you know, regardless, seeing all these people there saying, like, at one point being like, I wanted to and alive myself, I wanted to end my life, um, and because of you, I didn't, and yours was the first kind of, you know, advice that really stuck and things like that, and she was talking about how important it is to accept help in recovery, and, you know, he was talking about his children and things like that, it was just wonderful, um, so yeah, just take care of yourself and go outside and don't take the internet too seriously and touch grass because it's really not that deep. Um, and if you simply don't like a con content creator, you don't have to watch them. You don't have to watch him. You don't have to watch me. You don't have to watch any of them. You don't have to keep up with them. You don't have to tell them how disappointed you are because reality is that we're busy doing other stuff. Um, but I just was so taken aback because I was like, what? Like, how can you... How can you call someone that, uh, and as soon as they said right wing, I was like, okay, so they're not British, clearly, uh, because we, we don't say that, um, and it's just so weird, because even last night he was, like, talking about how, you know, he doesn't want all the people that are controlling, like, all the resources and money to make us feel like we're not working hard enough, and he was also talking about how we, like, don't need the government, and he thinks we have enough, like, um, a love within ourselves to, like, like have little communities, like, back in the day, which, again, don't really agree with that, to be honest, I think, like, I think it's a deeper conversation, but it was nice to listen to someone else's, here's a kicker, here's a kicker, listen to this, because this might be new to you, Listen to another person's perspective you may not necessarily agree with in peace and acceptance. <gasps> what? Yeah, crazy, huh? So it was nice to listen to him, even though I didn't agree with a lot of the things he was saying. And I thought, you know, maybe I'm just so brainwashed by consumer capitalism that I don't really... I don't know, you know, maybe it's because I'm, like, privileged or whatever. So I was like... And, you know, I don't know if that would work and things like that, um, but maybe, maybe, but it was nice just to listen to it and it was nice to see all these people coming together and sharing their inspirational stories and it's crazy to me that people were like, someone was like, this right wing conservative, whatever, whatever, um, and he was literally sat there yesterday being like, I think people should be free to love whoever they want to love, I think pe people should be able to do whatever they want to do even if someone doesn't like it, like, the whole thing was just incredible. If you don't, if you haven't been, please go. It's really, really cool. Um, the comedy is also so fucking funny. I was literally sat crying, laughing at some of the jokes. Um, at one point, he was like, he literally like um took a moped from one of the people in the audience and was like scooting around, almost fucking ran someone over. He had a dog on stage. It was just so good. Um, the dog was his like service anxiety dog, and it was really nice. He was talking about it. Um, this guy after starting being like, I cannot believe you guys think I'm condoning this guy and then she has a whole rant where she's just like Russell Brand saved my life I he explained to me that cult leaders are charismatic and then afterwards I walked out and I was just so inspired by his words and it's like oh my god this is hilarious if it wasn't so like if it wasn't so dark because even this was the one time I think in Amberverse history where Amber came out looking like a real queen. She just said about Young Dumb Honey Bun, she's like, it's sad because she wouldn't be able to sell merch if her, of her own or have viewers if it wasn't for me. Poor girl. <laughs> and then Amber said, I just went to her channel and the only time she would get good views was when she was making videos about me. So I guess she's back to making videos about me. And I, I do hate it when people like shame others for their views because the truth is, Amber, you you aren't special because the algorithm loves it when people make fun of you eating. Like, that's just the algorithm, you know? I wish the algorithm pushed good videos, but instead, I get videos of Sarah just being a high school bully to Amber. Because Sarah's made how many videos? At this point, she's not both sides in anything. She's not standing up for some kind of rights holding Amber accountable. No, she's just being a bully. 
You're like, yeah. I think reaction channels and commentary channels have their place, especially considering I don't think that people should be watching Amber at this point. I do think Amber should be deplatformed. But I think that Sarah has let her platform go to her head. And she does not realize that she's becoming what she claims to hate. And all of this, oh, well, I... I guess you guys may not know about this, but in over here in the UK, we we hear out people who disagree with us. And then someone's like, um, I'm actually kind of disappointed in you. And she's just like, well, then unfollow me then. And it's like, okay. And she's like, mm, oh, well, I know that over there they teach you like how to be racist and how to like mm, be really like divided blue, red, but we're just like really open-minded in the UK and we don't have like problems like gentrification or like, you know, it's really just a both sides issue. And like she, she'd had this seven minute Snapchat rant in which she explains to us basically the opposite of what she was trying to say. At first she was like, guys, you know, I can go to someone's show without being obsessed with them, without needing to advocate for them, without, without, you know, but then she goes on to be obsessed about this man, obsessed about his message, rave review his show, rave review his message, say that all he means is peace and love, and he has a dog on stage. How cute for his anxiety. And like, just be honest. Just own it. If, if people are calling you out just being like, I'm disappointed to see you with Russell Brand, you can be honest and say, I like him. You don't have to be, wow, so you think I'm associating with him? Because it, it really is, it really is ironic when you were like caught like a week earlier ranting about how Amberlynn is, is, should be held accountable for Chantal's actions. So where's the, where's that same energy for yourself? Oh, yes. And that's where we that's where we tie it all together young dumb hypocrite i hope you can see why i'm making this video because we live now in an era of youtube where most of the people who have careers on youtube are just people who talk talk shit about people who have careers on youtube and i am now becoming part of that problem because i have a career on youtube so if you want to help me you can comment down below, you can subscribe, you can share this with your friends. If you also have, like, if you're like me and you used to watch Sarah and you wish she could have, like, a wake-up call and think she's kind of out of touch at this point with all of her Snapchat rants at the haters and being like, touch grass, touch grass. She's like, oh, you guys, you don't take social media so seriously while she's ranting at her phone, responding to every comment, blocking everyone. And it's like, why don't you guys go outside and touch grass? And it's like her 50th story of the day. Do you know what I mean? Like Sarah, we can tell that something's wrong. So I'm not gonna, this has been too long. So I'm gonna end this here. But if I get at least like 1K views on this video, I'm gonna start calling you all my little pog champs. Do you like that? Will you um, act actively not watch this video if you hear that just so I don't call you my little pog champs? Or will you maybe comment down below to tell me to not call you my little pog champs?